<clears throat> Good. So you should be able to see my uh, PowerPoint screen. Can you confirm that, Matty? Yes, it's good. Wonderful. OK. Um, first of all, let me just briefly introduce myself. Um, I've been working with uh, QPR just for uh, going on for a couple of years now. Um, but prior to that, I've been involved with lots and lots of uh, process modeling, um, process re-engineering, process automation projects for customers uh, pretty much all around the globe, actually. So um, my role here is to help us grow our footprint in the UK. And that involves uh, bringing on board both new customers and new partners and supporting them with their um, projects. Matty, do you want to introduce yourself? Sure, thanks, Tim. So hello, everyone. My name is Matt Tierkik. I've been with the company for the last 20 years, very much working in the business process improvement and process mining space. So happy to be here and share my experience with you. Thanks. Lovely. Thanks, Matty. Now, in terms of our agenda today, um, we're just going to revisit um, actually what we're talking about when we uh, think about intelligent automation. And this conversation comes about really uh, uh, on the back of uh, many, many uh, interactions we've had with customers and, and, and visiting trade shows and things like that. And, and people kind of questioning really the essence of what they mean by automation. But importantly, and certainly from our point of view, the fit for process mining in, in the whole ecosystem of that. So I'm going to quickly define what we mean by intelligent automation um, and hyper automation and similar sorts of terms. Talk a little bit about some of the challenges. And then in uh, section three, we're going to be looking at why process mining matters. And then I'm going to hand over to Matty and uh, he's going to give us a more practical demonstration of exactly where our solutions fit and how we can support um, intelligent uh, automation and uh, these initiatives moving forward. So what is it? Well, you know, there are, there are plenty of definitions for, for what we mean by intelligent automation. These come from the likes of Cognizant, EY and McKinsey. Um, I'm not going to read all these out to you, but, but really we're looking at a selection of technologies, often starting with, with RPA, uh, involving analytics, OCR, um, and various other things, BPMS, and, and so on, but importantly, also involving um, process mining. Now, that's all very well and good, but also we have this term called hyper-automation, and uh, this is used a lot by Gartner, and um, on the face of it, it means pretty much the, the, the same as, as AI, and uh, actually, it's important to see that um, really we're talking here about a collection of technologies, a collection of methodologies. Um, and from the QPR point of view, if you look to the left of this uh, particular thing, what we mean by intelligent automation is a framework. It's multiple tools and technologies and methods for automating enterprises. Importantly, we're automating them at scale. Now, how is this done? Well, it's supported by an ecosystem providing an end-to-end -end holistic view, a holistic bunch of approaches to automate those processes. Importantly, imp imp uh, importantly, automate them in the right place at the right time. Now, we're going to be referring to this uh, diagram later on in the presentation, but, but let's look at really what that ecosystem comprises of. At the heart of the, the target there, you've got the ability, the need to discover, the need to discover those automation opportunities, identify them, prioritize them. And this is really where process mining plays an important role, giving people that end-to-end -end visibility of, of what's going on before they then choose how and what to automate. Then as we move out of the circle, then we've got the uh, area of implementation. So this is where we're bringing on board our technologies, um, our RPAs, our business process management system, rules management, decision management, you um, name the technology, then this is where it will fit. And then finally, the, the, the outer ring of our ecosystem is really using um, more potentially emerging technologies or, or, or reusing other technologies in a way where we can, for example, use AI to extend the possibilities of, of automation um, natural language processing, um, the use of agents, the use of chatbots, and, and so on. 
And in doing it this way, then we're really um, looking at automation from a very, very holistic view, but also potentially looking at setting up centers of excellence in areas such as this. So we're not just focusing on the, the, the means to, to the end, we're actually looking at how we can use a range of technologies around the organization to do automation to the best of our abilities. And this also extends to methodologies such as um, business process improvement, Six Sigma, and other things that we need in order to make sure that we um, understand the business as clearly as possible before we take the next step. Let's not forget the reasons why we're doing it. Um, and, and there are a range of benefits, but um, typically people are looking to reduce costs through um, augmentation of their workforce, improving productivity. They're also looking at saving time. So uh, look at how long it's taking to do um, standard high value processes and identifying opportunities to um, make them quicker and more efficient. <clears throat> On conversations with um, various people, we see accuracy is coming up as the, one of the big reasons for doing this uh, in terms of delivering consistent, repeatable processes, regardless of geography and um, really across the board in terms of our um, customers' uh, product portfolios and service portfolios. The customer experience, clearly, that's absolutely key. So what we're looking at here is using autom automation to deliver better quality, increase reliability, speed, improve engagement, and an improved overall experience. And finally, compliance. So we're seeing here now the, the need to, to show and prove compliance consistently across our transactions. And this is an area where we're seeing increased use of, for example, process mining to highlight areas of critical compliance, to show, for example, where we might be doing business with people who um, are uh, not recommended to doing business or indeed are, are illegal. And this is on top of um, the compliance we see from audit um, and, and other regulations. So these five areas, and, and, and there are other things that, that people shoot for, obviously, but typically these five areas highlight the reasons why we're looking at, at automation. And what's the price? Well, clearly we're looking at delivering an organization that's leaner, more flexible, um, delivers ROI consistently, um, and also is adaptable. And we'll see these sorts of benefits. And of course, everybody's business case is slightly different, but this points to some of the reasoning behind why process mining can be useful to support this. Let's look at some of the challenges. So I've set the scene and um, given you a definition and looked at some of the benefits. Let's look at some of the challenges that, that we see from um, customers that have experienced and have gone through um, intelligent automation, hyper-automation, RPA, and similar um, projects. And to give you an idea, I've um, used some resources um, that, that Deloitte um, came up with in uh, a December 2020 um, survey. Um, now, Everyone we speak to pretty much has, has done some kind of uh, automation project. They've been using some robotics, they've been using machine learning, NLP, and, and, and so on. And back in 2020, we were looking at 73% um, of businesses that were doing this. But interestingly, even though we're seeing such a high level of adoption, only 33% said they had a strategy. Now, this is interesting for, for lots of reasons. This highlights the fact that there can be pockets of projects going on in, inside organizations that aren't properly connected. It can be shown that um, these could be technology driven rather than business driven. Um, they could be vendor led rather than necessarily being pulled by the um, customer. Um, and this is absolutely key. And I think this is also borne out by the fact that during, and, and we still are in, in, the, in the COVID pandemic, um, we saw that 68% of them were, were pushed to invest in, in cloud, in this case, cloud-hosted automation, but automation uh, across the board. This is despite the backdrop of only 33% of them having a strategy. Um, and importantly, the final bullet point on here, we're seeing 23% have seen their roles change. Um, and we'll pick this up later, but um, this is key because these changes are going on around us, but are people engaged? Are they being bought on site? 
are they being um, supported in, in these changes? And I think there are lots of question marks, which I'll talk about in a minute in, in some of these topics here. Um, interestingly enough, one in 10 has had to retrain their role. And this is clearly something that is not going to go away. Just to finish really where, um, uh, and then give you a little bit more detail from this Deloitte study. Um, you're seeing here that the top four barriers for automation to deliver value based on this 2020 survey, you're looking at process fragmentation, lack of IT readiness, resistance to change, those people challenges again, and lack of a clear vision. Now, there are lots of reasons for this, and, and, and today we, we won't be able to go into all of them, um, but process fragmentation is often the case where we are looking at uh, um, trying to work with processes that we don't have clear visibility from, and clearly that's a strong benefit of, of where we sit in the process mining world. The lack of IT readiness, um, this can also reflect the element of, of legacy um, architecture, things that weren't really designed um, to be supported um, by new enabling technologies. And uh, that resistance to change there is something we'll talk about more of. Um, but, you know, people, if these bots are being introduced, people don't understand why and how it's meant to enhance their work, then clearly they're not going to be happy about it. And finally, that lack of vision. Well, this is actually a couple of things here. First of all, we're dealing with new technologies. So often we need to go through the adoption cycle, understand how we work with them and so on. But um, again, I think the vision is improving and certainly the conversations that, that the people that I talk to, they are, but, but there is still this tendency to dive in and automate first rather than necessarily perhaps to think about what we're doing and the impact of that. And finally, here on this uh, little slide here, 38% of them have already got mature process definitions. Um, and that's not surprising. Um, uh, process understanding is something that organizations have invested heavily in over the years for lots of reasons. But are they using that, those definitions and that understanding to really support their automation journey? And I think there's a question there for that. Um, and as you can see, they're 37% uh, really felt that they had appropriate standards. Again, no big surprises there, given the um, pace of change and the speed of which some of this information has been brought on board. I just wanted to cover in a little bit of detail these eight points in terms of uh, what we see in QPR as being some of the challenges. And these do uh, link, as you'll see in a moment when I hand over to Matty, to really where we support this with, with process mining. But, you know, first thing is, is uh, and it's often said, but just because you've automated it, it doesn't make it any better. You could be working with a bad process. So why make that process um, faster? if you're really going to make it actually a lot worse to, to, to work with. And that's key. And we hear this all the time when we talk to people. So you can't fix a bad process by pure automation. You need to think about that process up front. Now, success is often left undefined. And what we mean by this is that uh, we have lots of objectives for our projects, but we don't really understand what does good look like. What is our vision for the transformation? How will it support our customers? How will it support our teams? What's going to be involved? What kind of infrastructure we need sitting behind that? Um, again, painting the picture is key to sharing that, that vision. The third point there about scaling. Now, what we've often seen and, and through uh, discussions with, with people, we've really seen that um, once these applications were scaled, there were real challenges in terms of providing reliability or having knock-on effects to other processes in the business. Um, so bringing in lots of additional volume, but not really understanding what's going to happen um, to service once it's been done. Now, again, a lot of this is to do with the fact that people have rushed into automation and they haven't understood where they start. And this is something we seek to address with process mining. Employee buy-in, I've mentioned this previously, but actually 
in the rush to address and adopt tech, then our people are being left behind and they are critical to this. They understand their, their work. They understand uh, what can be done to help improve things. Now, they may not share the vision, but, but certainly they can be part of the journey. Um, and there are lots of reasons why people should be interested in um, uh, being part of, of automation. And again, I'll touch on this in some of these other little bullet points here. Um, benefits not being sustained, this fifth bullet point here. Um, now, too much focus on low hanging fruit. So yeah, um, let's go and automate our, um, our back office processes and so on, and um, look at procure to pay and some of those other things. It's important to do that, but actually it's important to address the more business specific processes, the things that make our organization what it is, the things that make our organization unique. Now, typically these processes will be higher value, but of course they will be harder to deliver. And this is again, one of the reasons why we support this with uh, process mining and in particular, the architectural approach we take to process mining to allow us to address a range of benefits and the way we can deliver both uh, immediate benefits from um, standard processes, but longer term with uh, more complicated processes. March of the robots, this point six here. Um, again, we've seen this time and time again, um, investment in um, robots and, and technology and things like this, but um, bear in mind, these are things that need to be looked after. The overhead needs to be built into the business case. The impact on our teams and on our structures needs to be properly considered. This is something that we didn't don't see documented very often in um, a lot of the text and the structures written around intelligent automation. The point about FTE savings, um, it isn't about reducing headcount. It shouldn't be reducing headcount. The, we live in, in a time where uh, labor is in uh, short um, supply. And actually what we should be doing is focusing on putting the hours back into the business by helping people work with higher quality roles. Now this goes back to the employee buy-in. But again, from our stories, from the things that we've learned, we see this time and time again, focus on FTEs rather than actually where the value is coming from. And my final point here, will it really, will it really increase productivity? Will it really enhance efficiency, reduce costs and help employees to do, do this less boring work? Now, on paper, it might do, but let's think through the project. First of all, let's understand where we can add value, where we can prioritize, and again, use capabilities such as process mining to help us really understand and paint a very clear picture. And just to finish off on this little bit of the, the presentation, um, is having 300 bots really a success story? I had to hire a team. Um, and why did we automate that process? Again, we've heard these similar quotes from, from, from several people. So uh, very quickly, um, why does process mining matter? Well, I showed you that um, uh, ecosystem earlier on where we, we saw the option to discover, implement, and extend um, our AI architecture. On the left-hand side, in our world of process mining, um, our solution is built up of four key capabilities, the ability to discover, the ability to investigate, measure, predict, and act. All of these things actually have something to bear in this infrastructure. Often people think that process mining is only suitable for the discovery phase. And yes, of course, rapid discovery of process and, and understanding what's going on is a key point of, of process mining, but actually the ability to do some of these other things is also critical. The basis of process mining, just to remind everybody, the, um, what we're talking here about is using transactional data to deliver clear visibility of the business. And uh, we do that by um, looking at um, core processes um, from any system. And we do this very quickly. And we then use the findings of our process mining efforts to support the automation effort. So there we go. As I said before, we compare process mining with older techniques such as process modeling, uh, manual documentation, and we come up with something that is objective, it's instantaneous, it delivers high ROI, and it is continuous and predictive. I just wanted to explain how our architecture supports that, that vision. 
you can see here uh, effectively three areas for process mining, automation, transformation, and compliance. Now, the way we have designed QPR Process Analyzer is to offer an infrastructure, a process mining infrastructure, a platform to support these three areas of delivery. We do that through four key building blocks, the ability to discover, investigate, measure, and act, as I was mentioning earlier on. And actually, when we start to do that, what we see then is that the standard processes are supported and we deliver fast and quick ROI on those. And secondly, the high value of processes are also um, dealt with. So using the same technology platform, we can cover a variety of use cases, but also through simple configuration, we can deliver the more challenging areas. And the software works effectively by using standard connectors, um, standard elements of both process and task discovery through now we have task mining through our dashboards, orchestration so that once we've got things process mined, we can then look at um, using that then to run RPA and, and other bots and things like that. We can use it to predict what's going on in the future. And finally, we can trigger alerts so that we can tell people that something is going to happen or something has happened. And all of this helps us embed process mining throughout the intelligent automation uh, journey. Very tangible ROI. Uh, I'm not going to cover these um, steps now, but um, you know these things see us uh, multi-million pound um, euro savings with uh, a lot of our customers, shorter lead times, better efficiencies, reduced rework. These are all typical benefits that, that we see with our AI-driven approach to process mining. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to hand over to Matty and um, and that's going to give us a little bit more detail about how we do this with our platform. Okay, thank you, Tim. So let me continue from where uh, Tim stopped. So going a little bit more into the details of uh, the synergy between intelligent automation and, and process mining. So on this uh, slide, we have summarized sort of the four key areas where process mining uh, heavily and, and uh, supports the intelligent automation journey and uh, starting from the very basics. So obviously the foundational capability in, in process mining is that uh, it provides the end-to-end -end visibility of the processes so that uh, you know what is going on, you understand whether the process is uh, good for automation or are you automating a, a bad process and hoping to get some results out of that. So that is really fundamental and, and simple thing. Then the second very common uh, use case for, for process mining in the intelligent automation context is uh, to uh, use it for identifying and also prioritizing different automation opportunities. It helps you to understand which are the best candidates and, and where is the optimal ROI available uh, easily. Then when the intelligent automation platforms, they may have some good analytics and reporting out of the technical functionality of the bots and how many tasks were automated and what was the uptime, etc. But that hardly ever provides any uh, tangible answers to the business who is really interested in knowing that what is the actual value of the automation. Is the automation we implemented providing the results that we um, planet in our business case and there's no better technology available out there proving the value and showing the chains in the end-to-end -end process context and uh, process mining whether it's a lead time improvement or some uh, cost savings etc then recently uh, more and more as process mining has become more mature and uh, there is uh, customers having continuous data flows from their underlying systems into the process mining platforms. Uh, that flexible intelligence provided by process mining technology can be then used to automatically trigger corrective actions uh, for appropriate use cases uh, to be implemented then by the low code or RPA solution. And even more so, we can apply some uh, AI and machine learning predictions so that it's actually uh, 
taking actions and, and preventing potential future process uh, failures proactively before the problem actually occurred. So let's uh, deep, uh, uh, dive a little bit deeper into all these different four synergy points here. So Tim, please go to the next slide. So in the discovery phase, as Tim already briefly mentioned, uh, there is clearly this uh, manual discovery approach that has been there for a long time. And, and I think we have all participated and done that, whether either for automation use case or something else. But then with the data-driven discovery approach, uh, including both connectivity to the underlying systems, as it's typically referred as process mining, or then recording simple manual task uh, from the PC user interface. So both accessibilities are available, but the result is that then you know what you are automating, you know the automation value, whereas in the traditional approach, not using the data, you guess the actual value and, and uh, it's uh, unpredictable what the outcome outcome is. Let's go to the next one. So like Tim briefly mentioned, uh, something new in, in QPR Pros Analyzer capabilities, there's now uh, a QPR Task Recorder module available. And uh, what it does, it uh, allows you to record user transactions of any selected uh, application running on the PC. So where is this needed is that sometimes uh, the underlying systems like CRMs or ERPs of the world, they are uh, locking things on a certain level. But when we see from the holistic process mining model that the actual bottlenecks are in that part of the process, so we might want to uh, dive deeper. And that's what the task recorder allows. So it is capturing 100% of everything that happens on the PC, except of course, some sensitive fields like the passwords. Users can add annotations, custom comments to the recording feed. And that is then used in the process analyzer to, to analyze the results. So you can jump to the next one. Uh, simply showing the, the flow of action. So the recorder is uh, doing the recording. Then that uh, data is uh, sent to process analyzer where we apply different AI and machine learning models to transform the image into the appropriate format and then use the leading visualization and analysis capabilities already existing in Process Analyzer to identify RPA opportunities or set up KPI dashboards. And let's move on. So just one uh, example of uh, what is what process discovery can look uh, in a process mining product. So you get any kind of uh, information out of that data model that uh, is relevant uh, for analyzing the process. And in the next one, there's an example of uh, process variations, which is one typically very valuable aspect uh, needed in the automation uh, identifications, because I have been talking to very many customers who deployed some bots for the standard uh, happy path, and then it came out as a complete surprise that how many different kind of variations there are that should be supported with the automation in order to truly make it work. And uh, that led to a never ending project and uh, not providing the business value. Then let's go on to the next one. So then identifying automation opportunities. So we have developed together with customers different kind of frameworks and uh, analysis lenses that you can apply for doing it. There, here is three examples called process maturity, process nature, and process complexity. So basically looking at different uh, KPIs dimensions in the, in the process and determining anything where there's a high automation potential or whether some process harmonization would be required first before it's uh, really mature enough for, for automation or in some cases, some combinations even form a sort of no-go area. If the process or, or is not changed, then there's no potential for, for automation. Then let's take a next one. 
here is just an example from the product that all these different frameworks that we have developed, there are out of the box views providing exactly that uh, particular information in a visual and easy to understand format. Next one. In addition to identifying completely new automation opportunities, one low hanging fruit many customers are taking benefit uh, through utilization of process mining is by understanding how the existing automation rate varies between product, uh, regional, customer, vendor type of dimensions and then realizing that, okay, in some areas of our business, we are already 90% automated and, and in some other only less than 10% and having that information and then deep, deeper diving into the data and understanding what might be causing is, is often proven to be a fast way to increase the automation rate of the same process, same activities. Then moving on, as the third point, uh, we talked about the end-to-end -end, uh, value and the KPIs. So these are the process excellence KPIs we often use. There's the customer viewpoint as this is about processes, the happy flow, but then even more increasingly also the automation aspect. And when, when all this is in place and, and works optimally, then we can talk about true process excellence. And next one is just showing the same as a simple dashboard that could be deployed to, to any data, any, any process, uh, looking at how are we doing on the holistic level. And then the last, if you can go here and, and, and click a little bit more. So what I wanted to show here for the fourth uh, bullet point is this orchestration piece. So now what we see is the, what we call the traditional process mining, that there are completed process cases and you can apply different uh, viewpoints to it. Let's call it a KPI and then always see that whether individual cases were successful or, or failed. And for the failed ones, we can of course use that information to improve the process, do root cause analysis uh, and understand how, how it can be made better. And that's like a traditional business process improvement approach. But if we move on on the slide, um, now becoming more operational, we can also uh, take a look at the not yet completed cases, so-called open cases, and applying artificial intelligence, machine learning to do the prediction of uh, any KPI that how does it look by now, whether this delivery will uh, be delivered on time or, or whether it's late. And for those where the prediction AI thinks that it will fail, we can do preventive actions. Well, it could require some human work or intervention, but in some use cases, triggering bots and workflows will do the trick. And in reality, where we have seen some great result is in a hybrid uh, solution, meaning that well, the decision itself may require human intelligence, but we use uh, software bots uh, to actually collect the relevant information and, and providing on a silver plate to the decision maker and, and making the process much faster and, and uh, efficient. So that's uh, the more real-time operative uh, way of uh, integrating and utilizing process mining technology and, and RPA or other automation to work together, making almost uh, self-healing and, and uh, improving process. And the last is just, uh, if you go to the next slide, an example view that uh, you can set up this kind of intelligent orchestration views where the product is recommending the next activity that can be launched automatically or by human there, uh, whether it's uh, triggering a, an automation or sending an email reminder or whatever is the applicable and recommended next step for the individual uh, case in the process. So I think now it would be time for some questions. This is just summarizing up that these are the four synergy points and, and areas that we see especially valuable when using process mining to support the intelligent automation journey.
Yes, thank you very much for the eye-opening presentation. And uh, yeah, like you mentioned, we can we have uh, two questions uh, from the audience. Uh, first one is um, a question about that: what are the typical low-hanging fruits in terms of automation that have been discovered with process mind? Tim, you want to take that? Yeah, okay. Um, well, the, clearly we've seen a lot of work in, in, in um, the, what I might call the standard processes, the, the core processes that, that, that all organizations do. Um, so in, in the procure to pay and, and, and order to cash and, and some of those other areas, that's where there's been a lot of effort. Um, also in um, things like warranty claims and, and other things as we move more into uh, the more complicated processes. But a lot of things have been effectively in um, the shared service context, which is often where a lot of these, uh, the, the volume of, of, of work is and where there is uh, consistency across different companies. And I would add to that, that really like low, low hanging fruit quite often has been just uh, uh, triggered by the insight uh, from the data, meaning that uh, in large corporations, the right hand doesn't really know what the left hand is doing. And uh, when you bring the data visible and show that such a simple thing like uh, uh, three-way matching for automatic invoice approval that, okay, in Norway, they have implemented this thing, but nobody in, in Belgium knew about it. And when you see from the data that uh, these particular transactions are fully automated in some parts of our business, and then simply applying the best practices uh, within the corporation. So very often it's not even more complicated than that, especially the larger the organization, the more unknown there is to be discovered from the data. Thank you. That was a good, good, probably very good answer. And if there are more questions, feel free to put it in the questions box. But uh, let's go to the second question. So there is a question that we already have too many business intelligence tools. What new does your solution bring that cannot be done with the more traditional tools? Well, thank you for that. Very, very good question. Uh, then, of course, first of all, we're not providing a business intelligence tool. This is process mining technology, but uh, I clearly understand and see where the uh, overlappings uh, could potentially be seen. But uh, Starting from the simple thing, uh, there's no business intelligence tool out there that can automatically visualize business processes from uh, data. That's the truly unique thing in, in any process mining technology. Building on top of that is the fact that uh, in order to do that, you have to collect a comprehensive data set. And, and usually the reporting uh, platforms and the data warehouses do not necessarily even have all the necessary data. If they don't do it, then it means that uh, some KPIs cannot be produced by them. And uh, especially then any process related KPI where we can leverage the building lock approach makes a uh, development of uh, lead time or sort of sequence of events uh, related uh, analysis is something we can do in five seconds and in an analytics and bi tool it requires two weeks up to six weeks of full-time work from the developer to build the logic uh, under the hood in order to be able to visualize and, and show the necessary reports so there's clearly uh, that additional benefit. And thirdly and lastly, I would add the prediction viewpoint. When, If we want to predict the on-time delivery uh, as an example, then of course the moment the order is created, we know everything that is on the order. So does the business intelligence tool and we can provide the same accuracy prediction using some algorithms. But then the following day, some production planning is done and then the next following day some deliveries are planned 
and that flow is completely understood by the process mining tool but not by the reporting and analytics tool so they are no longer able to update that prediction based on the already existing flow of events which is critical from the point of view that how likely this on-time delivery is happening so that's just to give you a couple of examples it's like why do we need trains if we have planes well you can already move from one place to another but uh, I think uh, there's a place and need and it's been proven by a rapidly growing market for for some more sophisticated process related uh, analytic technologies like process mining. Great. And uh, yeah, let's go to the last question. There was uh, one additional um, regarding that uh, about the software. So how much flexibility is there in configuring your own analysis and dashboards? Well, we have two minutes left and two minutes would be more than sufficient to show you that there's full flexibility. You can start from empty space and in less than two minutes you have exactly as many shards or flow charts on that view with the exactly content you want. I'm more than happy to arrange a, a demo and show you uh, in practice how it works but that is one of the biggest strengths in, in QPR so it is uh, by far the most flexible and fastest product for developing your own analysis and dashboard out there that I can promise. Great. I guess that's all the time we have. And uh, yes, thank you very much for all the people joining our webinar. And uh, like Matti mentioned, uh, you can you can uh, book a demo with us anytime if you're interested. And uh, you can find all the details about our products on www.qbr.com as well. But for now, I guess that we will close this webinar. Thank you very much for joining and uh, have a great rest of the day. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Take care.